Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you are all having a great day. This happened a couple days ago, but it's still incredibly relevant. The Gemini cryptocurrency exchange founded by the Winklevoss twins in 2014 is calling for better regulation of the cryptocurrency space in a new ad campaign. This was reported by the Wall Street Journal. Placards on taxis and in the New York City subway contain slogans like crypto needs rules while simultaneously suggesting that Gemini already provides a regulatory compliant exchange for investors. Other slogans include money has a future and crypto without chaos. Chris Rowan, head of marketing at Gemini, told the Wall Street Journal, and I do quote, We believe that investors coming into cryptocurrency deserve the exact same protections as investors in more traditional markets, adhering to the same standards, practices, regulations, and compliance protocols, end quote. Some in the crypto space have criticized the ad, saying that they are saying that the introduction of anti-money laundering or know your customer and other security measures is anti-ethical to the founding principles of cryptocurrencies. Uh, so, I mean, I understand that crypto does need rules. However, in my opinion, my own personal opinion, I think that subjecting crypto to the rules of our previous overlords is probably not the smartest direction to go. Uh, I myself, I told you guys before, I have not used the, uh, the the Gemini Twins Exchange. It's just not something that I really care for. Uh, I feel like from the very beginning, my own personal opinion, uh, when these two got into Bitcoin, uh, they made sure to brag that they owned a, I think it's around 150,000 Bitcoin. This was 2014 or something like that, 13 that they were bragging about these numbers. So I felt from the very beginning that it was just about the money for them. I understand. I got it. I get it. Uh, but I still feel like that a lot of what they're doing is just trying to make sure that the old market simply uh, washes over ours and cleanses us and therefore makes us more appealing to uh, higher ups and institutions and other rich people in the space. I think we would have gotten there on our own and I think we still can get there on our own. I mean, it's a very weird ad campaign. I th t Typically, if you've ever watched any TV show where they talk about how people make ads, how they promote ads, uh, there's actually a TV show not promoting them at all. It's a show from Australia. They're called Gruen, G-R-U-E-N. You can find them all over uh, YouTube. And it, it takes a long time to be able to come up with an ad campaign, especially one like this. For those who are wondering, uh, this is actually what the ad looks like somewhere in Manhattan. Uh, it's just a little weird. Um, I feel like a lot of people who are in the cryptocurrency space aren't really in it for the crypto. Uh, they're just in it to kind of, I don't know. I, I feel like v very rich people who are already in the space probably don't think about what other people actually need in the space. I don't know. I have my own um, ideas of exactly how crypto should be regulated. And it's kind of not like this. Uh, if if the past financial world is any indication of how things um, are to go in any type of financial system, I would rather not have that be a part or at least like an in-depth part of cryptocurrencies because the, the traditional financial world is just horrible. It's complete crap. It's based on debt. Uh, is there to make you get into debt so that you remain in debt for the rest of your life so that you can, uh, that your money kind of uh, trickles down, but trickles down to people like Chase over here. If you can, it says haste, you can still kind of make out that it's Chase. Anyway, a lot of people in the crypto world are not too happy about this. Uh, but to be completely honest, uh, Gemini is not as relevant as many other cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, so it's not that important but the fact that they still went ahead i mean i i get what they're trying to do they've been trying to do this from the very beginning they've been they've tried to side with coinbase but they've tried to make their own lane where they show that they are regular regulatorily that they are compliant uh with know your customer and anti-money laundering things but i feel like they've gone the completely wrong route uh but i do hope that it does work out for them financially i wish them all the best i don't know them don't really care about them or for them as I don't know them, but everyone uh, d makes their own path in crypto and some will be correct and some will be incorrect. You never know.
Alrighty. Next up, here's a very interesting one. One of Japan's mega banks, known as Mizuho Bank, has plans of launching its own cryptocurrency by March of this year. The digital asset will be pegged to the Japanese yen, thus joining the stablecoin category of cryptocurrencies. The value of one unit of the stablecoin will be fixed at one yen. According to The Block and Nikkei Asia Review, the stablecoin is the result of the JCoin project announced by the financial group's chairman, Yasuhiro Sato, who was the president and CEO of Mizuho at the time. The planned stablecoin will be used for shopping and remittances at no cost. Retail shops will use the currency. Using the currency will be charged lower fees than compared to... That's crazy. Uh, to regular credit card transactions, thus making the stablecoin more attractive for adoption uh, in such transactions. I want to see if you're getting it. Remember, we, we spoke about this exact same thing about two weeks ago. To access the functions of the stablecoin, users will have to download a specific app on their smartphones, the app will allow for users to transfer funds back and forth from their bank accounts at no extra charge. As, I mean, there shouldn't be a charge at all. When choosing to pay for goods and or services, the app will have a QR code scanning capability to make the process even more efficient. Retail shops will also not be charged for depositing funds denominated in the stablecoin from customer transactions into their business's bank account. Other regional banks in the Mizuho Financial Group will be able to use the service as well as their loyal customers that's kind of weird uh the service by mizuho is yet to be given an official brand name if you remember and this this pretty much solidifies it i was uh not to toot my own horn i was completely correct i said there seemed to be a very weird uh movement we heard 2000 the end of 2017 the last three months when we first got like wind that we might have potential regulation and around Eight months into 2018, there was a constant uh, central bank digital currency. We have to create a central bank digital currency. Uh, central banks around the world should be looking into creating their own digital currency. This was kind of the, the, the thing that we had nonstop. And I said towards the end of, it had to be around September, October, there was a huge narrative when the G20 countries met each other and they all kind of came to the consensus that they were going to release some type of uh, cryptocurrency rule framework together between them, anti-money laundering, so and so and so. But the idea was struck down by Japan and many other countries who said that they didn't feel that it was necessary to have a central bank digital currency in any capacity in any country right now for the immediate future. And we had stuff that, uh, quoting that we may not see them until around the year 2021. And I said, that's really weird. This, this was the entire thing. Like every single country was constantly talking about that. They felt that if crypto was potentially a threat to them, the only way to get around it was to be able to create their own digital bank, central, cur central bank digital currency. And I said, two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I said, I'm seeing a very weird narrative forming where we have other countries who are now talking about that they no longer want a central bank digital currency, but they're launching their own stable coin. And what's a stable coin? Especially if it's attached to a bank, it's a central bank digital currency that's pegged one-to-one -to, -one to, their, to their own so-and-so. So we've had dozens of these launching in the United States. I think we have one or two in Japan. This may be the first one from like a mega bank. Like imagine... Uh, and I'm sure it's, I can, I can feel it in the wind. We're either going to have JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, or some other major American bank who's going to announce their own stablecoin. It's going to happen. Like, there's no way that they won't do it. It may even be like an announcement that they're thinking of potentially doing it, or they have been looking into the idea of it, which means that they're a lot further ahead than they want to really let on because they're trying not to lose back in the game, especially when you have stuff like this, that they're making up the framework that it's more attractive for you as a, a retail shopper or a retailer or anyone who's inside of these shops to be able to use these digital currencies as opposed to using anything else and you have uh, less fees and stuff like that this is happening so i thought and i'm pretty sure everyone else did as well remember when we were talking about months ago uh the fact that all these governments and countries were like no we're not going to do it i was like well i guess that leads us to the uh potential future of the normal cryptocurrency market being able to if we you know have enough time we can edge our way forward to the front of the line and have more people around the world adopt us or the cryptos that we know and talk about, and therefore we can maybe have a bit of an edge. Here we go. The really weird part is, is that is at the same exact time, 
we have this happening, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people uh, brushed it to the side, didn't really think it was very significant. I don't know what planet you're living on. The same thing we were talking about, that Facebook is launching their own stablecoin that's going to be pegged to the U.S. dollar, and the fact that people thought that a, a co- Facebook has, w- what is it, like, I think two, 2 billion people who are on their platform, them launching their own stable coin as it were a one-to-one peg with the u.s dollar is probably going to be one of the largest cryptocurrency things in the entire world i told you guys months before when we first had wind that they may be thinking of potentially doing that that i said if they do launch their own crypto i.e something that can fluctuate in price as an investor this is definitely something that i i myself would look into but then they switch it on everybody and they're launching their own stable coin which tells me as facebook is so dramatically large that they've probably been in talks with the U.S. government at least for a couple of months, more than six months. I don't know the exact time frames that it takes to uh, tell someone that you're going to make a digital copy of their currency. If Facebook does end up making this and it does succeed, you can bet your bottom dollar that you are going to hear news from other banks around the world who are going to also be launching their own stable coins. What this is going to be, and I, what this is probably going to be marketed as at the very beginning is something very similar to um, PayPal. I think that this is going to be another uh, trend in 2019 with banks launching their own stable coins. And I think they're going to try and pass it off as Uh, This is a very simple new way that we've made for you to be able to share money with your friends, send money to your friends and family. You've seen those ads like with like the grandmother hugging her grandkids and it's like, send money to your family. That's not what the ad says, but like you understand like kind of what I'm saying. You've seen the like the really weird family ads before, like share more and all these other things that's going to end up happening. And they're going to try and pass it off as if it's like another PayPal, like as if it's something it's an app you can download that you can probably connect to your bank account that you'll be able to send money to around the world. That's exactly what's going to happen. There, there, will, there will probably be no central bank digital currencies because we already have information from banks and other companies around the, the world who have probably, logically, had to get the blessings from their country. You cannot create a digital anything of a fiat currency and expect to not have uh, the SEC, the CFTC, run through your door with a gigantic metal. I don't know. What do they slam doors down with? Whatever cops do. You know exactly what I'm saying. You have to at some point have spoken to a lawyer and been like, hey, we're thinking of creating this and you have to get the regulatory compliance completely in line with everything. The point is, um, I think central bank digital currencies are not going to happen or maybe they will be morphed into something later on. But it seems like to me, the next step in uh, fiat evolution is now stable coins. They've done incredibly well. We've seen the success even if it may have been falsified in some way, allegedly, by Tether. And I can only imagine the the the, the fees and stuff that, I don't know the fee system for any of these stable coins, but one can assume that there's definitely some type of a fee system where the initial holder or creator of the stable coin, maybe even getting one-tenth of a, a cent per dollar or whatever that's being passed back and forth there's some type of fee incentive like no one no one in in the u.s is creating 37 different stable coins we also had news that one of the coinbase executives left coinbase to join a stable coin product uh prop whatever a project they're not joining that because they like the sound of not making any money there's definitely some type of fee system based on these things this is my prediction for 2019, there's definitely going to be a huge uptick in the amount of stable coins that we're going to see. I think a lot of the stable coins that we have heard about before are going to completely be washed away, especially when we get more mega banks who are joining it. It's it's incredibly fascinating because it's not even just. I think a lot of people thought that the that the crypto war would be like something like more dramatic that it would be banks uh, and and judges banging on gavels and saying no you're you're officially banned and people protesting no we need our bitcoin we need our we need our economic sovereignty it's something as simple as this it's it's, it's the banks and governments realizing and we're going to talk about that in a couple more seconds as well realizing that they may say that cryptocurrencies are not a threat uh there's there, there there's far too much attention from banks and governments that let us know that they consider crypto a threat at this point that there's there's nothing in my mind that tells me that they are looking into these things and they don't see this type of thing. Rest assured, uh, Mizuho Bank, as a mega bank in Japan, probably to- spoke to the Japanese government. I-, I don't know if there are even Japanese government members inside of the, the banks, uh, whatever, the branch and stuff like that, you know, the the 
rulers of it. Why is my I keep missing all these like really small words? Like I can't I can't remember the word bird in certain instances. Like I'm just losing all of my words. Anyway, the point is very fascinating. Uh, I thought, and many other people thought that the the fight against crypto would be more dramatic, and something simple as them creating their own crypto as a stable coin. So they don't get into the crypto game. They don't create something that can fluctuate in price because nobody would accept it. But they say, here's an alternative to using, you know, if you can download this app and you have a QR code, you can pay the exact same way. This is exactly what's happening in China and many of the countries around the world when you're trying to pay. You simply show them, they, they show you their QR code. You scan it with your phone and it kind of goes through. And the same exact thing, I, I'm pretty sure PayPal has an app. Maybe Apple Pay as well. What's the other one? Like Amazon Pay, Amazon Money, whatever the app is called. I'm pretty sure they also have QR code functions. Exact same thing. And if this continues and if these are successful and if we get news, let's say by this summer, that one of these other projects, one of the other stablecoin projects is making like, I mean, like really good money. We're going to see the floodgates open. A whole bunch of these are going to start launching from different countries. A lot of money is going to start pouring into these. So the, remember when we had the whole thing with Tether and they had, uh, it was like 2.8 billion with a B, Tether. And then it went down to around 1.8 billion after the whole controversy and stuff like that. Banks obviously have a bit more money than that, especially if you can get other investors to invest $100 million at, at one time. There's a lot of money to be made in these stable coins. Not exactly sure how much, but for the people involved, they clearly, a mega bank doesn't create a cryptocurrency unless they plan on highly benefiting from it. Anyway, just my prediction. Uh, it's incredibly fascinating what's happening. We, we, we have, I mean, crypto's mainstream now. Like, there's no other way to kind of say it. Um, EOS, Omise Go, Neo, Tron, so-and-so may not be household names, but crypto is definitely here to stay. And I think we're going to have a bit of a tug of war as to uh, what remains more relevant. Is it going to be the cryptos that we know and love? Or is it going to be a a fight where we see other ad campaigns and people talking about uh, use ours instead as opposed to using something else? Because on top of uh, the world that we've lived in thus far, we've had the choice and the chance to be able to go to an ATM, take your money out. If you want to buy something that you want no one else to know about, go to an ATM, take your money out. You can buy it and pay for it in cash. Um, what's happening in many other countries, especially in China, is that governments want to know everything that's happening. So when you have something that they try to market as something that's easy and simple and quick and convenient for you... It means that it's simple, quick, and easy and convenient for them to be able to track you, to know exactly what you're doing and when you're spending your money and how you're spending it. Because at some point, we've already seen many other countries around the world who are desperately trying to phase out uh, paper currencies. Because if you look at actual, I don't have the graphs here. This is completely off topic. I don't have the graphs. Uh, for uh, countries, when they talk about their like their GDP, how how much their, their, their country has grown and so-and-so, like 6.6% and 2.1%, they also release things where they talk about the money that they believe that they've lost because of people who haven't paid their taxes, tax avoidance, whatever the case might be. And it's always staggering. It's these huge numbers that they put out. So countries are trying to figure out how to make sure that there's less of that risk. And when everything is digital and everything has to be uh, scanned, everything has to have a uh, QR code, this is how you kind of get around it. Didn't mean to spend that much time. I actually planned on breezing over this but everything kind of hit me all at once and it's very i mean it's so obvious the way that things are going right now i don't mind a digital world uh but i just want to make sure hopefully that the cryptos that we know are part of it so that we have at least some type of economic uh i hate the word sovereignty i keep using it often that we have some type of economic freedom in what we want to do. Like, I don't mind stable coins being around, but if we get to a point where they're like, you can only use stable coins to do stuff, that's when it kind of becomes a problem. My goodness. Okay, let's move on. Next up, Japan still in the news. Five more cryptocurrency exchanges have joined the Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association, or the JVCEA. According to an official announcement on the 4th of January from the JVCEA, the JVCEA is a self-regulatory body formed in April by 16 registered crypto exchanges that aims to create industry-wide investor safety standards. In October, Japan's financial regulatory formally granted self-regulatory status to the JVCEA to oversee the crypto sector. The body made in part as a response to the January 2018 five, my gosh, like a half a billion dollar hack of the crypto exchange. 
has released a had released a set of regulatory guidelines in June, including a ban on insider trading and prohibition against the trading of privacy oriented coins. When I talk about I think a lot of people get this confused as well, and I'm so glad that this appeared here. Very, very glad. A lot of people think that I hate privacy coins. Um, I don't hate them, but from an investor standpoint, we've had countries, um, side note, this is not the only country who has their own self-governing crypto regulatory blah, blah, blah. The U.S. has two of them. I think one of them is made by the by the um by the Gemini twins and the other one is made I think in part by Mike Novogratz don't quote me on that exactly but I know there are two of them I know there are two governing or trying to be crypto governing bodies and across the way as time has gone on we've heard from multiple different countries who've talked about that they don't like privacy coins they don't like them they've they've called them out by name Monero Dash and Zcash this is just kind of what it is so I like the idea like I, I I spoke to you guys about Mimble Wimble and I and I I like the idea of them I hope that we get them implemented it's one of the main reasons why I am partially bullish on Litecoin potentially rising in the future it's because of the things that they're trying to build on top of it that make the transactions private I don't hate them which I think people got confused with I don't care for them as an investor when uh I'll, 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 I'll put it to you this way Let's say you were thinking about in investing in an Apple stock and then Japan and America were like, yeah, we, we, we don't like uh, certain stocks uh, and we definitely think something is wrong with Apple and we're going to look into Apple and we actually don't want people trading Apple at all. That's the point where it's like, okay, my money is being messed with, so I'm going to completely back away from that. Uh, same exact thing that happened with the US and Japan. They called out these coins by name. And that's part of the problem why I specifically don't touch them from a money-making standard. I saw some people talking about that before, talking about that I hate privacy coins. And it's like, no, I don't. Like, I actually think they're wonderful. I think all crypto should have these things laid on top of them. It's just a matter of when it comes to me making money, I have an inkling that I won't be able to make as much money from them. Anyway, the point is, uh, it's nice to hear that these things are forming in different countries. I would rather have... Uh, what's it called? Like companies and organizations who are already into crypto governing the space as opposed to governments. I am very happy that we have at least a couple of situations around the world where governments are allowing these things to kind of exist. Uh, typically, the way that they work out, at least for now, is that as a self-governing body, you have to kind of give the government like I don't know if it's every six months or a year. Like a piece of paper that says this is what's happening, this is what's going on, this is the things that we think should be happening and blah, 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 and how we uh, plan to regulate. This is what you should not do as a government because you will stifle innovation. Uh, so to hear that five more cryptocurrency exchanges have joined, it's very, very nice. Um, I hope that we get more news about this from other countries as well. A lot of chairs here. Anyway, um, but yeah, very good news for Japan. I, f I mean... Japan has kind of and I and I and what one of the really weird things is that Japan has been and was even more so leading the way before but this half a billion dollar hack really like stopped us in our tracks because J in Japan I think they just changed this recently as well I think Bitcoin was actually um legal tender like it was a it was an actual like currency in the country uh but they've been re like releasing so many like regulatory guidelines and stuff like that that uh innovation has been slowed a tiny bit, but it's still not too bad. Anyway, let's move on. Bit of a country hop, I guess. Uh, the Reserve Bank of India, or the RBI, has published a report indicating that cryptocurrencies are not a threat. However, the central bank says with rapid growth and the adoption of cryptocurrencies, this assessment could change, adding that constant monitoring of cryptocurrencies is needed. There's a pretty picture. The RBI published its report on trend and progress of banking in India 2017-18 on the 28th of December. The report cites an analysis by the Financial Stability Board, or the FSB, an international body which monitors and makes recommendations about the global financial system. Quartz India summarized on Thursday, they said, a global financial body which includes India says cryptocurrencies aren't a threat. India's central bank wrote in this report, and I do quote, The FSB has undertaken a review of the financial stability risks posed by the rapid growth of crypto assets. Its initial assessment is that crypto assets do not pose risks to global financial stability currently. End quote. My opinion has been for quite some time, once again, and I just said it a couple of minutes ago, when you release a report like this, it's because 
in my opinion, you already consider something to be a threat. You think that there is a potential or that there is a potential in some sort of capacity that this could cause harm to your government and or to your monetary system. Same exact way that we saw a couple of months ago. I believe it was last summer when that thing happened in front of Congress in the United States. And the only questions that the people on the board kept on asking the members of the, the crypto panel, who were the experts, who are either yay or nay, every other question was, is this a threat to the U.S. dollar? Okay, next question, is this, a, is this a threat to the U.S. dollar? Okay, so you're saying that this is not a threat to the U.S. dollar. This was all they really cared about. When you get, I mean, I can only imagine how much money they spent on a, on a thing like this, on a report to show them, to, to reassure themselves that cryptos are not a threat. Kind of interesting. Uh, I personally believe uh, that cryptos at this point, hmm, how do I say this? We are at the moment in cryptocurrency world, life, history, where people really need to get it together. And this goes as far as what I was saying in the other video, as far as Roger Ver, Craig Wright, Vitalik Buterin, I think he's awesome. He needs to get it together. We need to all together as a community uh, stop the tribalism. At least give me like two years. No mention of your coin is an SHIT coin or anything. Governments are wrapped. They, they, they're, they've taken notice. Like it, It's not even like we're like a niche thing anymore. They are looking at us and they're trying to assess if they should strike us down. If we manage to come together... And this is why I always say, as people in the cryptocurrency community, we have our own uh, jobs, if you will, to bring other people in, to let other people know. I know it's difficult, uh, they, but there will always be one friend, one person who you meet, who does want to know, who does have interest in it. Bring them in, let them understand, and let them. We, we need to unify as a force to make sure that crypto adoption uh, kind of exponentially explodes. This will happen on its own once prices end up going up. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to get more people into the cryptocurrency space or have them learn about blockchain and or what cryptocurrencies are or the potential benefits of cryptocurrencies before we have the next bull run. Because uh, we are going to get, a, in 2018, and I guess even now, beginning of 2019, we did have a lot of uh, reports like this from multiple countries who all came to the assessment that cryptos are not a risk to them. But I can assure you, in about 16, 18 months time, we're going to start having reports filing out, especially if we have a bull run, especially if Bitcoin happens to go over 50, 60,000 this year. Believe you me, we're going to have a lot of reports from countries talking about that cryptos are a threat to them. And this, this them uh, creating their own stable coins is, I think, the first step to try and make sure that they have a foot in the door. But I worry about the actual full extent of the power that they're trying to going to throw that they're going to try and throw behind uh, their anti-crypto movements. Like for those who weren't here last year at the beginning of 2018, uh, the, there were a couple of YouTubers who were posting videos about how like horrible cryptocurrencies are, how bad they are for the world and how they're like just scams and so and so like that. And then we had information that those couple of YouTubers were actually paid by the Polish government in Poland, the country to uh, undermine cryptocurrencies. And then the weird, weirdest part was is that the, 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 the government actually came out and kind of said, sorry. They were like, yeah, it was us who paid that. Uh, this is happening all over the place. Makes me kind of uh, wary of other channels who don't like cryptocurrencies. Or even like, I mean, think about like normal, uh, like news platforms and stuff like that. Like the people who own these things also own banks. You think that they're not going to release negative statements or negative things about cryptocurrencies because it undermines them. And, and I mean, you, you became a billionaire off the backs of other people in the banking system. And by exploiting other people, you think that they're not going to be like, Hey, we, we, no one should be using crypto. It's, it's a horrible thing. So, uh, pay attention, be vigilant as best you can, uh, bring other people into the space. We need more, uh, eyes on crypto who understand exactly what's going on. I mean, don't like, don't swindle people to get them into crypto. Like, let them actually understand exactly what it is and how it works. But without further ado, let's move on. For those who were wondering, prominent crypto exchange known as OKEX has announced that it will be supporting the upcoming Ethereum Constantinople hard fork that is scheduled to take place at block height 7 million something. The exact date is not known, but it is estimated that the event will take place between the 14th and 18th of January 2019. That's definitely wrong. 
OKEX's announcement comes a day after Binance also stated that it will be supporting the Constantinople hard fork. Uh, they say, I'm pretty sure you just have to like leave it with them. They say to secure your asset, we recommend you to deposit your Ethereum tokens into OKEX and we will handle all the technical requirements for the hard forks. They say if there are any airdrops during the hard fork time, project teams are welcome to contact us at so-and-so and so we will do the distribution to our peers after receiving the tokens. Um, at the moment of writing, or them writing this, there are reports of possible airdrops from the hard forks of, my goodness, Ethereum Classic Vision and Ethereum Nova. I don't know if that's supposed to be Ethereum Nova. Uh, no exchange has yet to announce its support of these events. I may have mentioned this in the last video when we were talking about uh, the price rise in Ethereum over the last 14 days week somewhere around that time however long it's been ethereum was 82 dollars is now trying to push towards 160 dollars it has to do because of this uh the people who are deep into crypto understand that this is a very monumental event for the ethereum network that we've been talking about for the past two years trying to get going a lot of other people apparently and i someone in the comment section wrote that apparently there were going to be airdrops and hard forks uh and it apparently is are these two coins uh i will say it this way in my opinion no other crypto exchange no other articles have been written nothing else from a prominent non-pumpy and dumpy perspective has been written about the uh validity of ethereum classic vision and or ethereum noah if you feel like you, I don't even know. I there's there's no nice way of saying it. Um, maybe look into if you should stay away from these projects because if no one else is talking about them, that means later on no one is no one else is probably going to be talking about them. That's the nicest way of me saying it. Um, right there's I'm gonna completely stay away from that. Uh, when forks happen, typically. Other people try to make their own coins. Not to say that it has to do with these two, but other people make coins that tend to be cash grabs and they pump up the price and then they sell it off. Just a side note. So uh, do your own research because sometimes coins that are made from forks are not necessary, will not be supported. And I don't want anyone out there losing money from something that could potentially be a scam in the long run. I think that's the nicest way to kind of sugarcoat it. Yeah. So if you are, uh, a lot of people were worrying as to where they should keep their Ethereum. I would just, Binance has announced it. OKEX, I'm pretty sure like you can pretty much have it anywhere. Like I said before in the other video, I don't think that people aren't going to be supporting the Constantinople hard fork. This, this isn't something random. Like this is something that's been planned for a very long time. And it's just a matter of when it's going to happen at this point. To kind of finish things off, um, Mr. Bitcoin is doing okay. You can kind of see, I don't have the extra charts open, but you can see it's not doing too bad. It is finally crossed by the uh, $4,000 mark. It appears that Bitcoin needs to pass by $4,400 and or $4,500 to be able to show that we are in a bullish trend for the entirety of the market. Uh, no one knows when or if this is going to happen anytime soon. Uh, passing 4,000 already is a very good indication. Let's hope that maybe even as this week can continues to go on, that we receive some type of news about uh, anything about positively about the market that could cause Bitcoin's price to go up a bit higher. Because as of right now, we all know uh, Bitcoin's dictating the prices and we have to all hope for the best for it. All right, everyone. That is definitely going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a... Great evening, great morning, great afternoon, great summer. It's not... Wait, I think it's summer somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Okay, I'm going to shut up. That sounds really... Anyway, uh, it's wherever you are. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I do appreciate all of your support. Crypto needs rules, but maybe not the uh, specific rules that the Gemini twins thinks that it needed. And yeah, I'm going to talk to you all soon. See you.